All right. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if you could um, describe something about the costs of unemployment to individuals, like the consequences of unemployment, um, from your experience as a work coach at the Department yeah. of Work and Pensions. Absolutely. So um, um, being a work coach um, and also being someone who was unemployed for a period of time in the past, uh, it, just, it, it just brings into sharp focus the effect psychologically, economically, Mm -hmm. um, on, on an individual, the, um, the pressure is absolutely massive. Um, from the moment, let's say, for example, you, um, um, you're made redundant, um, mm -hmm. the pressure grows. Your bills don't stop because you become unemployed. They keep on coming. And whatever savings one has, and in my experience, most people who are unemployed really don't have savings. A few do, yes, but most don't. And so the pressure is absolutely massive in terms of just to be able to keep up with just breaking even. And so when, by the time, and then if you evolve the stigma of maybe someone hasn't been unemployed before, maybe it's been a long time since they've been unemployed, and then they have to go to a job center or they have to speak to a work coach, they don't even want to do that. Why? Because uh, rightly or wrongly, it, 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 in their mind, it, it denotes failure. For, although it's not, it's something that naturally happens in terms of people become unemployed. But um, in that person's mind at the time, it denotes failure. It, it, it's almost as if like they've, there's a personal failure within themselves that they could have done something to be able to change the situation. So do you feel that people lose that, lose that identity in some ways? Yes. And because people's identity is tied up on their job. Yeah. Isn't so it? the identity is tied up with what oh. they do. It's tied up with um, um, self-esteem. It's tied up with how they present themselves. Um, remember, maybe um, the week before or the week before that, they were handing out a business card that this is who I am, this is what I do. And now... Mm. It's from that to, you have to then, obviously in terms of, it, applying for benefit is quite invasive. In terms of, um, you're gonna be asked, okay, so let's say for the first, um, on, under our rules, for the first, um, when you apply for universal credit, um, if you've paid, uh, if you've worked full-time for the first two tax years, then you get, um, you get a thing called new style job seekers allowance. And you get that for a maximum of six months. But after that, it becomes a bit more invasive in terms of um, if there's a partner in the house, you know, they want to, you have to declare that income, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it just, it's very invasive. So people, um, from being comfortable within themselves in terms of the job that they do, from being, uh, it's like when you go to visit a GP and then you have to tell them in terms of, okay, this is what I'm, but, you know, it's slightly different in that respect. Yeah. So it, it, it is tough. Do you think it, um so how would you say it affects, in your experience, affects people's relationships, partnerships, family life? Yeah. Uh, so so um, whereas, let's say before, um, going out with someone um, pre-COVID, um, so what used to happen, I mean, I've had customers say this to me that, um, because I, I run motivational sessions for, I used to run mm. motivational sessions for people who became unemployed because um, we, we, we looked at it and we thought, l listen, in terms of when there's no light in their eyes and maybe when they mm. first came to see us, there was, there was a spark there. And then over a period of time, things can go down mm. very quickly in terms of the, even the, just their personal hygiene, personal appearance. Um, mm. And then you combine that with, uh, maybe the first or second week of being unemployed, you're thinking, oh, I can, I can wake up a bit late or I can catch up on doing that housework or doing that chore. And then they realize that, oh, there's nowhere to go to. So when a friend rings them up or says, oh, do you want to go out for a pint? And then they think, well, I haven't got the money to do that. And then either they'll have to make up an excuse or, or you know, just avoid that. Why? Because um, it's not what they're used to. And um, they have now they have to account for things that they'd normally you wouldn't even think about in terms of um, hopping on the tube, buying a dinner. These are things that people yeah. who are working don't think yeah. about. So, of course, it affects their friendships as well yeah. Yeah. as uh, family life. And and um, I mean, how long do you think? How long do you know? Is this after a certain period of time people give up searching to some extent? Mm -hmm. Do they? 
I mean, that must be quite difficult yeah. to handle as a yes. work coach. So it, it depends on the individual. And become demotivated, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, it depends on the individual. Now, what tends to happen is that if, let's say someone has that, and, and I can give you an example, I won't mention her name, but I know a particular yeah. lady who had, um, had a high-powered job. She was in about 45K um, as an IT person, um, doing really well, and then mm. um, became redundant, and then um, was trying to get that similar type of work. Um, and... Uh, six months went by nothing happened and then you could physically see that you know in herself she was not the same person and and what people tend to do is rather than take what's on offer they tend to are fixated because they think well you know what i was working i used to earn forty five thousand, but um especially in the it market the market moves very quickly and so mm. if you've been out of it for six months a year then I you have see. to meet the market where the market is and yeah. not where you expect to be. And so uh, what we try and do in these sessions is try and really just give them coping mechanisms that, listen, um, you have to be able to um, see it from an employer's point of view and not just from your point of view in that respect. Yeah. And therefore, um, let's say uh, one of the things that we found out when I did this session several years ago is an accountant told me a true story. He said, when I became unemployed, I was thinking to myself, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got qualifications, I've got experience, I'll just get another job. But he went mm. for several interviews and wasn't getting the job. And the last interview he went for, he was asked to do a presentation on top of the interview. So he yeah. rang the guy who interviewed him and said, listen, I'd like some feedback because I don't understand. I think I did well. And mm. the guy who interviewed him said, listen, under normal circumstances, we probably would have hired you. But what happened was that several of the people that I interviewed said to me, Rather than give me the 55,000, give me 50. If I'm doing a great job in six months' time, by all means, bump it up. And so this guy said to, look, several of the people said this, and I went back to the director, and the director said, listen, hire one of those guys. Because one, they want to work, and they'll be here in six months' time, so we don't have to rehire. And then two, they're going to work really hard to ensure that they exceed our expectation. So, so basically, in some sectors... People, as well as some people becoming demotivated, people become de-skilled quite quickly. Very quickly. In terms of the market. In, in the, the market, market. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And one of the things, I, if I can add as well, um, so we have a thing called low-value procurement, which mm. um, we use within the Department of Work and Pensions for, let's say, let's say for an example, um, I can give you an example of someone that, so I had a particular lady, an architect, who mm. would work for several years, became unemployed, and um, I was her personal, uh, we, back in the day, it was called personal advisor, but uh, as a work coach. Yeah. And so we, well, obviously we had discussions back and forth in terms of how things are going, how can we, what can we help? And one day she came to see me and she said, look, I'm frustrated. Um, um, there's this particular software package that, you know, I, I have to um, have, but it's, it's over a grand and I can't afford that. And then I explained to them, listen, we can do, we can do a thing called a low value procurement to be able to see if we can apply mm. for this. Um, mm. And we did. She got the money. Right. Yeah. And um, did, did she training? get a job? Yeah, she, she, get... got, she got the training. Yeah. And she so, went so back to that... And she's never been back, Mark. <laughs> All right, good. So is that what gives you satisfaction? Absolutely. Is when you can turn people's lives around, and how do you do that? So, um, uh, 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 listen. What, what we what we tend to do as work coaches is actually get to know the individual because mm -hmm. and and get to know their passions and and I think if you want someone on side you have to know where they're coming from and so what I tend mm -hmm. to do whether as as a one to one or whether in a group session I ask them what are you, what is your passion or what are your passions and and I also candidly say listen if you are not pursuing those passions you're not being true to yourself because those things are intrinsic to who you are as an individual. But what you can yeah. do is look at the options on the table in terms of, okay, so if I can't get my 45,000 a year job, what can I get to be able to get me back on the ladder? Yeah. Um, um, is there a, I told that you helped a famous footballer at some time yes. who had an injury, is that <laughs> right? Yes, that's Obviously correct. Obviously, won't reveal names. Yes, but that's correct. And how did that go? So what happened was an interesting story. So he came to the job center and he walked in. I was his uh, personal coach at the time. And in talking, he, you know, he then said, you know, I used to play for um, a certain London club. And I was like, <laughs> okay, wow. 
And, it, you know, in my head, you know, when someone comes in and they used to say I was a professional footballer, I used to play for a certain club, in my head I was thinking, okay, one, how do I help you? And then two, what are you doing here? But it yeah. turns out in his case, and yeah. he said to me, he was honest, he said, look, Ola, um, what happened was that um, I was the breadwinner for my family. And so I helped out my family. But what I did, I really didn't plan ahead for my future. So rather than buying a place, I would just rent a really expensive pad. I would kit it out with the latest stuff. And then yeah. if I got bored of that place, I would just leave all that stuff in there. And so this happened and then he got an injury. And then before he knew it, um, he didn't recover from that injury. And then quickly yeah. that club let him go. And before he knew yeah. it, he was in St. Malibon Job Centre. And so yeah. what we did for him was um, he went down the route of uh, becoming um, um, self-employed as someone who wanted to start mm -hmm. his own business. So I put him on a scheme and he did that, thankfully. Yeah, I mean, what, I was just wondering, what is the difference between universal credit and new style job seekers allowance? Okay, so is it universal credit yes. contains six benefits in one and the yes. same? Yeah. yeah. So with New Style Job Seekers Allowance, it's for people who've worked for the last two tax years, full time, right. for the last yeah. two tax years. So initially, we don't assess your whole circumstance. We just assess you as an individual that, okay, you've worked for the last two tax years. Okay. In that yeah. case, you can qualify for a New Style JSA for the first six months. And then after that six months, we will look at your total, total picture in terms of who else is in the household, et cetera, et cetera. And how much would you get on universal credit now? Uh, so universal um, credit is um, the standard rate for a person over 25 is 409 pounds and 89 pence, which is not a lot of money. Yes, yes, indeed. And job seekers allowance is that? Uh, so job seekers allowance is um, I don't know the figure off, but I can I can give you those details. So it's about yeah, sure, 30, yeah. It's about 300 it's, and something pounds right, uh, a month. A month. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, I was also wondering um, what do you do when there's a low, you know, a, high, a situation of high cyclical unemployment? You know, at the moment with COVID, for example, mm. there's about 1.7 million unemployed yeah. according to the ONS at the moment. Mm. Must be surely difficult to keep people motivated when there really aren't any jobs available because yeah. of this situation in the economy. Yeah. So what we tend to do, so we have a thing called a climate commitment, which basically tailors. Um, the needs of the customer as, as to their contract. Mm -hmm. So in the old days, we used to call it a job seekers agreement. So now, um, obviously, we have to take COVID into account and then just work with um, work, work with the individual to, to see what kind of work they're looking for. We also have people called employment advisors who source jobs from employers. And so right. we, will, we will regularly send out journal messages to customers and say, look, if you're interested in a particular type of work, please contact us. So it, it, it is hard, but people are still getting, even in this pandemic, people are still yeah. finding work, definitely. Yeah, well, I suppose there's new growth sectors out yes, there. Yes, absolutely. Um, but what, how do you know people are actually actively, actively seeking work? So well, there's surely some people that have given up yeah, yeah. and aren't actively seeking work. You know, the truth is that we, we are in a pandemic and, uh, yeah. and I think um, the government recognises that. So the rules have been relaxed for a number of months to be able to take that into account. Um, and that has been the case, actually, from the beginning of this pandemic, to be able to recognize that we're in a difficult position. Someone can't really, for instance, if you want to be a waiter, you can't really go for a job interview because there's no restaurant open for you to be able to yeah, attend sure. an interview. So we take, we take it, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and you know we, we act accordingly, depending on the, in the individual. Even historically, there aren't the people who are seeking a particular wage or a particular occupation, which might be unrealistic. Yes. Uh, so you obviously you have to manage expectation in that respect. Yeah. In terms of what yeah. someone okay. is capable of doing um, yeah. is one thing. And, and what the market says is available for that yeah. particular person. Um, so with help, people are able often to retrain, reskill. Re so okay. Yes, there is help, there's help available. If, so if someone wants to, let's say, to retrain, um, what I told mm. you earlier about in terms of a low-value procurement, um, yeah. so we can look at that if there's a, so let's say someone has been in an industry and um, and they've maybe been made redundant and there's and they've tried and maybe can't get ahead in terms of that industry, then we look at other options in terms of, okay, what 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 are your interests or what is available that you can do? If it's something, if there's a course out there that you can do to be able to help you um, get ahead in a, another particular field, then yes, we, we definitely look at that by a case-by-case -case basis. And another thing I was wanting to 
discuss with you really is, um, of course, one of the costs of unemployment is homelessness yeah. and, and root, rough steeping. I mean, is is unemployment a root, a downward route into homelessness? Potentially, uh, so y- yes, and, really, because. Um, when we think about it, if someone, um, and I know a personal case of a particular guy. Um, so what happened was that this 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 chap was um, was an accounts manager for a company, um, wow. and um, he became um, they made him redundant. Um, so he had a little money to be able to 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 go by, but um, after a while, the stigma of actually signing on, as they say, he didn't want to do that, and so what he then did was. Um, he decided to just ignore the bills, ignore, 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 until eventually his landlord evicted him. And so he was on the streets actually selling the big issue. And, oh, and But, um, <laughs> so the funny thing about his, his story was that, uh, true story, an American walks by and this guy says, big issue. And the American says, what is the big issue? And he said, well, it's actually homelessness. Uh, and then they talked a little bit. And the American mm. came over here to be able to set up a company to do something. And in the end, he gave him his card. and said, look, I really like you. Call me. Long story short, he got the job. But the wow. thing that I bring out of that is because often the thing about it is that baby steps. That's what I say. Mm. Selling the big issue was a baby step for that gentleman who got him, um, lifted his confidence, lifted his mood, because one thing yeah. that happens with the unemployed people is that depression often sets in if care is not taken. Yeah. Yeah. And, where, and yeah. when depression sets in, people are not thinking straight. So normally you would pay your bills on time, mm. you know, you'd, you'd act accordingly. But when dis- d- d- depression sets in, you know, it, it, it can really have an yeah. adverse effect on, indi- on an, an individual. Yeah, and do you have a sorry? And you have a charity. Could you I tell? Do. Could you tell us about the charity, please? Yeah. And so, um, um, the reason why. So, several years ago, I mean, many, many years ago, um, uh, I was homeless for a little while. And mm. when I say homeless, I lived in my car for a little while, and um, yeah. I was going through a divorce at the time. So, um, and it was shocking from someone who who had worked, you know, had a mortgage. Um, paid yeah. my bills, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to becoming someone who lived in their in their car for a little while. And so when I when I got back on my feet, um, mm. one of the things that really struck me was that there are so many people who just need a hand to be able to get back to where they were and even better themselves. And so I I, I mean I'm a Christian, so um, I started a, a yeah. charity called GospelRocks.co.uk. Yeah. And um, with the view, so what we wanted to do, the plan was to be able to have a Christmas concert on Christmas Day, to be able to raise funds and to be able to build a hotel for the homeless. So that, that was the plan. Mm. And yeah. um, so I approached a few companies. Um, I put to, approached a particular company who, I, I won't say their name on, online here, but um, they're architects. And they said, look, if you find a piece of land, we will design a hotel for you. And so what we then did, um, I thought, okay, to be able to get mm. publicity, because I sing, you know, in terms of outside yeah. of work. Yeah, I, I do, I do yeah. gospel singing. So um, I, I wrote a song mm. called Help the Homeless. And um, yeah. um, it was a duet with um, a, a, a friend of mine who's a gospel artist. And we, we released the single to be able to raise um, money for this particular project. This was actually last year. Uh, this was 20... 20 we wanted to do a video early 2020 we wanted mm. to do a video and we had some people on board to be able to do a video and then covid hit <laughs> oh, right. oh, yeah. Yeah. so um we're looking for so hopefully to be able to to do the video for um help the homeless which is the single and then you know just um mm. um plan hopefully towards 2021 in terms of christmas day to do a, a, a christmas day concert that sounds terrific yeah. um what, what was the um key point where you got out of being homeless. Um, um, the thing is, I, I had help. It was just a short yeah. while. Yeah, had I had help. help. Yeah. The thing is, um, even though um, the stigma is there in terms of you don't want to contact your... Because yeah. to, to be honest, I didn't want to contact my family because I didn't want to yeah. see I, I was in a predicament. Yeah. But, um, you know, I got over yeah. my pride and I reached out to my brother who, who helped me out. Yeah. So I stayed with him for 
um, a little while. But you know, the key thing, he said to me, listen, I'm not going to give you any money, but you have a roof to stay. You've got food. <laughs> and yeah. for me, I think the key thing was that I was able then to be able to say to myself, okay, so what I need to do, I, let me get any job to be able to <clears throat> um, get myself mm. a deposit to be able to rent a room. So, and, and thankfully I worked for, uh, um, I, I, got a, uh, uh, I got a job with a car company um, I think I can say they were, it was car giant. I worked with them for several months. Yeah. Yeah. Got my deposit, got a room that was mine. And for me, yeah. that was the breakthrough for me. When I, when I, when I, it wasn't a big room, but it was a room mm. that was mine that I could put my head down and then think and plot. And yeah, and that, that was obviously, um, we're talking about maybe 15 years ago and never looked back yeah. since. So essentially yeah. that's what I want to do, to be able to do the same for others as well, to be able to, yeah. get them a place to be able to live um, so they can work towards getting a deposit and um, I mean, they I, can launch out. I think that maybe a lot of, a lot of people realise it's quite easy to become homeless, isn't it? It's Very only easy. one or two short steps. 100%. From, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. It, it's, 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 yeah. It is so... And obviously because of the industry that I work in, I yeah. see that up close and personal. Yeah, that. Yeah. And especially not just um, people who, let's say, who have been made redundant, but people who also come out from prison as well, because there's that as well, where yeah. people come out of prison, they haven't really got a support network. Um, yeah. Really, there are steps in place, but they're not really rigid to be able to ensure that no person that comes out of mm. prison is never homeless. Yeah, I mean, some employers are good, aren't they, with prison leavers? And yes. you can sort of point them in that direction. Yes, so. yes. For instance, yeah. Timpsons, yeah. which is a great yeah. company, um, exactly. who, who does that sort of thing, whereby they hire people who have who served a sentence, and just to be able to help them to integrate back into society, because we have yeah. to look at it from an emotional point of view. Um, yeah. Listen, once you've served your time, all you want to do is just get ahead. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we, as a society, we need to put steps in place to make sure that those people get the help that they need. That is just the honest truth. All right. Well, thank you very, very much for talking to us. And I'll put a link to the charity. Thank you so much. All the best. Thanks a lot. All the best, okay? Thank you for talking with me. Thank you, Mark.